I would like to make an argument that we as economists need to change what we have on the axes for these two graphs. And that's specifically um, what is normally thought of as good x1, which might be apples, and good x2, which might be chocolate. Um, and this is the diminishing marginal utility graph, so apples or chocolate is down here. I, I think that's fine for introducing students in their first econ class and maybe early in intermediate microeconomic theory, because these things are easy to visualize. And I do think there's huge benefit to students um, being able to visualize in their head what's going on when they're learning these complicated new concepts. But I think it's important to transition at some point to thinking of these differently, and specifically to thinking of these things as being types of utility. And over here I have a few types like status utility, curiosity utility, opportunity utility, because these concepts are way more flexible and I think way more well-matched to the real world if we think of what we're getting from something as being different types of utility which can be contained within a certain thing. Like cars, of course, cars bring you status utility, they bring you practical utility, and we could sort of make a really long list of the types of utility that humans get. But any one product can actually bring you multiple types of utility, and it's that type that diminishes at the margin rather than more of this certain specific item. And the example I'd like to use to think this through is summer camp versus online math courses. And you could actually measure both of these in days or weeks that you're enrolled in the course. So a, a classic way of setting this up would be to put summer camp for your kid or for your teenager on the x-axis, that's good x1, and online math courses on the y-axis, that's good x2. And the fact that both of those things have diminishing marginal utility, like you get a lot of value out of the first uh, few weeks of summer camp, but maybe not summer camp year round, so, so the more weeks you go, the less value each, each week has. And that still holds, so I'm not arguing that there is not diminishing marginal utility within one of these goods, but I will make the argument that you are going to get a lot more intuition and uh, deep analysis out of thinking about this if you separate this and think about instead of, okay, these two things as being just completely separate, and instead you, you recognize, okay, there are different types of utility you get from summer camp. Um, you might get social utility from interaction with friends. You might get curiosity utility that the summer camp will satisfy um, some curiosities you have about the world. And I think part of this is, with education at least, that education incites curiosity and then satisfies it. And that's a really uh, wonderful experience. Um, it also opportunity utility. So you might imagine a summer camp that actually does a little bit of math, like math camp, and in which case um, the opportunities you have in the future that might open up to you because you're building up your math skills. That could be part of the value that you're getting from summer camp. And you might imagine a parent that's thinking about how many weeks should I pay for for summer camp. They might really value that math and that opportunity utility, they'll value other parts of that experience, but they might ask themselves, can my student get the same benefit of math education from online courses in math? And they're kind of weighing those where the, the summer camp utility has these other types of utility, but the, the parent is thinking of displacing the math in the summer camp with other ways of getting math. So being able to separate out these phenomenon is really important. And of course we know the reason that there's convexity in these indifference curve graphs is because both of these goods have diminishing marginal utility. Like the right way to think about indifference curve maps is that these are contour maps where you have utility mountain Utility is the, the z-axis sort of coming out of the board, and there's this mountain of utility that you go up that has the diminishing marginal utility shape in both directions. If you're looking at utility mountain from here, 
you see uh, the diminishing marginal utility of good one. If you're looking at utility in Moten from here, you see the diminishing marginal utility of good two. And therefore, convexity of these graphs depends on this diminishing marginal utility. Well, what I'm saying here is actually, even though each of these uh, things individually would have diminishing marginal utility, the more nuanced way of thinking about this is that if we put one of these utility types on the x-axis, and let's just say, let's say, um, let's say opportunity utility, which is what I'm using to describe the opportunities for your future that arise when you learn math. So I think this is actually a good way of thinking about it, but it looks confusing at first because you're like, wait a second, we have utility on the x-axis, we have utility also on the y-axis, that's just weird. But I don't think it's weird because this is a specific type of utility and this is the overall value of that utility where we're thinking of this as being fulfillment of opportunity utility through some means like an online math course or summer camp. And you could do the same thing where you put social utility down here and you have diminishing marginal value for extra social utility that you get. You have diminishing marginal value for curiosity utility. And of course, you have to come up with different types of utility people care about in their hearts when they're out there buying stuff and choosing, uh, choosing what, how to spend their money and how to spend their time. But there's going to be this convex relationship where you want a little bit of social utility, a little bit of curiosity utility, a little bit of skills utility, like learning math. And you're really trying to optimize the combination of all of your utility types rather than the combination of, say, summer camp and online math courses. And we could go back to our old types of goods like apples and chocolate and cars. And we could separate each of these into different types of utility like um, satiation utility, how much does the apple satisfy your hunger versus like the experience of eating the apple versus the experience of eating the chocolate. And you could break down your appreciation of an apple into a few different types of important utility where um, where rice and chocolate may be substitutes for part of the utility for an apple but not exactly equal utility for the apple. You want a little bit of satiation and a little bit of enjoyment of the experience and you can combine different foods to satisfy those types of utility differently. But it's the underlying type of utility that's really what you're trying to optimize with your uh, convex utility mountain. So I hope this has given you a sense for why I think it's actually really important that we as economists get away from just using utility as this catch-all thing. I think we need to divide utility into different types of utility and just think about our modeling in that way because it, it way more matches how people think how people make decisions, the experience they have in the world. And you might imagine if I added a third thing up here, like a really strong um, group of friends that the student had that they could take a vacation with that group of friends. Adding that third thing may nudge the parent toward the online math courses rather than spending money on the summer camp because that child's social utility is already met in their friend group. Whereas a parent that has a child where they don't have a lot of friends yet and the parent knows that summer camp will give them a new set of friends, for them they may be nudged towards summer camp um, because of the types of utility and the breakdown of that. So I think this is really important for um, upper level economic students to really reshape how they think about diminishing marginal utility and how to break down people's value for different types of products.